In this video, we'll get to know the moving average model a little bit better in the sense that we're going to discuss some of its key properties. In particular, we're going to discuss how the variance and how the mean of a, moving, of a moving average model would look like. So to get to know the properties of a moving average model, consider this example of an MA3 model. So as we said uh, in the last video, 3 represents the Qth lag or the maximum lag that we're going to use for this model. So this MA3 model looks something like this. That's yt is equal to ut plus theta 1 ut minus 1, plus theta 2, ut minus 2, plus theta 3, ut minus 3. For simplicity, we'll first assume that the model intercept is equal to 0, so that mu term before is just equal to 0 for now. Uh, note that, as we said in the last video, in the moving average uh, model, the error terms, which comprise the linear combination of, of what we define our time series variable yt, is a white noise process. So it adheres to the properties that the expected value of ut is zero and the variance okay, of ut is equal to sigma squared, which is less than infinity, right? So uh, let's first demonstrate what the mean is. So what the mean of a moving average uh, model is. And in this case, we're just trying to get the expected value of yt. And this corresponds to the mean, okay, to the mean of the MA model or the moving average model. And in order for us to do that, well, let's just apply the expected value operator to this, uh, to this model here. So uh, we first calculate for the mean of yt. For algebraic simplicity, as I said earlier, let's omit the, uh, the model intercept for now. So that's expected value yt is equal to the expected value ut plus theta 1 ut minus 1 plus theta 2 ut minus 2 plus theta 3 ut minus 3. Okay, uh, let's apply, okay, apply properties of expected value. So applying properties of expected value, we get expected value of yt is equal to expected value ut plus theta 1 expected value ut minus 1 plus theta 2 expected value ut minus 2 plus theta 3 expected value ut minus 3. Okay, but recall that the error terms, okay, the error terms that we have here follow a white noise process for any value of ut. Therefore, uh, that's the zero mean property, which holds for any time period. So it holds for today, the present, and of course, the past. So the value of uh, this property here of expected value of ut equal to zero, that holds true today and for any time period in the past or wherever, for as long as the white noise property will hold. So if we just substitute that as zero, so expected value yt, we have 0 plus theta 1 times 0 plus theta 2 times 0 plus theta 3 times 0, we're left with expected value yt is equal to 0. And that's the mean, okay, that's the mean of a moving average model or a moving average process, moving average process, okay? So, since we have the mean already, we can calculate for the variance. Okay, so let's now move on to the variance. So to be able to calculate the variance of a moving average model, it looks something like this. So we remember some statistics, variance yt, that's equal to okay, expected value yt minus expected yt, okay, times yt minus expected value yt. So the form of the variance looks something like something like this. But recall, okay, what we just had, recall, okay, the expected value of yt, which is the mean, okay, mean of our MA model, that's equal to zero. So this form here will reduce to variance yt is equal to expected value yt minus zero 
okay, times yt minus 0, or expected value yt times yt. Okay, so it will reduce to that form there. Now, what we do is we know the value of yt. That, that's our, basically our model specification. So we can plug in our model specification there. So that's variance of yt equal to expected value ut plus theta 1 ut minus 1 plus theta 2 ut minus 2 plus theta 3 ut minus 3 times ut plus theta 1 ut minus 1 plus theta 2 ut minus 2 plus theta 3 ut minus 3. Okay, so we're going to be left with that. Now, if we just apply, okay, what we're going to do is apply rules, okay, rules of polynomials, okay, polynomials. So we're going to simplify this. Essentially, we're going to multiply the, these two um, polynomials here to simplify the form. So we're going to do that. So variance yt, that's going to be equal to the expected value of, so notice if you try to simplify it, you'll end up with something like this. So you'll have a term that's u t squared, okay? That happens when I multiply this and this together. Plus, you'll have a term that's theta 1 squared, u t minus 1 squared. That's when you multiply this and this, okay? Plus theta 2 squared, u t minus 2 squared. That's when you multiply this and this together plus theta 3 squared ut minus 3 squared. That's when you multiply that and that together. And you'll have terms uh, that are what we refer to as cross products, okay? Cross products. Uh, and that means that uh, you get terms such as theta 1 ut minus 1 times theta 2 ut minus 2. You can get a term like theta 3 ut minus 3 times theta 2 ut minus 2. So there are all of these terms that are possible that are uh, a linear combination of two or more time periods that of what we lag our white noise process as, okay? And what we can do here now is uh, this cross product term is some lump sum term which represents a linear combination of such of the things that we refer to as um, multiplying two uh, different periods together, okay? And that could be brought about by the distribution. However, we note that, okay, note, okay, note, the expected value of one period and another period, okay, is just equal to the covariance of one period to another period, okay? That's just equal to zero because if you recall one of the assumptions of a white noise process, there is a zero auto covariance um, except in the first, uh, in the initial period. But any other period, if you compare it from any other period, okay, the auto covariance is equal to zero. So that holds true for this process because again, the white noise, uh, the error terms we're looking at here are white noise error terms. So we can simplify this further above, okay, as just merely variance yt is equal to expected value ut squared plus theta 1 squared ut minus 1 squared plus theta 2 squared ut minus 2 squared plus theta 3 squared ut minus 3 squared. And that's it, because the cross products will all be equal to 0. Then we apply, okay, apply. Uh, properties of expected value. So similar to what we did with the mean, and we get variance yt is equal to, uh, we have here uh, expected value ut squared plus theta 1 squared expected value ut minus 1 squared plus theta 2 squared expected value ut minus 2 squared plus theta 3 squared expected value ut minus 3 squared. Okay, so we're left with that. But if you recall, okay, the variance of a white noise process uh, is just effectively equal to sigma squared. Okay, that's just sigma squared. Uh, so we can plug that in. So that's equal to, so that's variance of yt. That's just equal to sigma squared plus theta 1 squared, this is also sigma squared, 
plus theta 2 squared, again, sigma squared, plus theta 3 squared, sigma squared, okay? And uh, if we do that, okay, so that's going to be the, uh, the variance uh, at the initial period, okay? So this is the variance at the initial period that would be equal to, just simplifying it, that sigma squared times 1 plus theta 1 squared plus theta 2 squared plus theta 3 squared. And that's the variance of the moving average model, which also happens to be the autocovariance of that same model.